Welcome to this week's show, Legislative Update. I'm Jim Baumgart, Nanette Bullabush from Elkhart Lake. We're co-hosts together in this program. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today we happen to uh, uh, decide that it would be a good idea in 2018 uh, to start discussing some of the candidates who will be running for governor, uh, Supreme Court uh, uh, of Wisconsin, uh, uh, Congress, uh, and so we've invited an expert. Our favorite, Kel Potter. <laughs> Kel Potter. Who, always, who, who knows so much. And Good it's to be here. Yeah. Very involved Election in this. Election coming up. Yep. Yeah, we're already seeing ads. Um, well, it's starting emails. earlier probably than we've ever seen before. Right. Yeah. All of us here have been around politics a long time, and it used to be that you'd circulate your papers in June, and oh. then we had a, a September primary, and then a November election. And people really didn't, they well, they organized behind the scenes starting maybe in February or so, but now, my now gosh, they're, right they're organized two years before and right. start their television ads already in the, in the fall of the year before, right. which I don't know if that's a healthy thing. Sometimes you wonder if people just don't get sick of right, it all. Right, right. I think, I think you might be right. Yeah. So the governor's race is the big one. Scott Walker has said yes. he will probably run again, I believe. You can tell by his, he was just in Sheboygan this past weekend. Um, well, he's also, his, his positions, he's also sort of moderating. I mean, the last, yes. his last release was that he's going to take $200 million into helping subsidize Obamacare premiums. Right. And, you know, he's, he's after, more after, money in education after having yes, cut hundreds after of millions. Cutting, and right. so I think he's just trying to move, yeah. run to the center. Right which is what uh, Ronald Reagan was good at doing. He would run as a very conservative Republican, and then, then he'd run back. to the center to yeah. try to make sure that his popularity and his, his Well, his it's interesting, were some of the Republicans just hammered it against uh, Obamacare, which turned out eventually to be pretty popular, right. uh, and, and tried to cut money here and cut money there. And now they want to put some money in to cover the cost and then blame it on Obamacare. It's a crazy place we live in where uh, you, you want people to be covered with insurance, uh, then you hammer away at a, at, at a program that's providing it, and then when it gets hurt a little bit because of what you've done, you add some money to it. It doesn't make much sense, does it? No. Well, I think it did. I like to call it partisan politics gone mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it came out of Obama, nothing was going to be said right. positive about no, it. Nothing. But they yet, could not you know, 20 million people were helped by this, and it was something that was needed because there were 50 million before this who had no insurance. No insurance. So and it was a Republican Romney uh, bill, really, or program. And so it really ought to have been uh, endeared to Republican uh, rather than so sort of chastised. But that shows that. Partisan politics rules things, and as we record mm -hmm. this program, we've got a shutdown in, in Washington, yeah, right. which is, again, partisan Hopefully politics by the time people where watch no this, one talks over. and no one compromises, and no. we have dysfunction because of it. Yeah, it's yeah, not it's how it interesting to that one party has the control of the uh, Congress, the, the U.S. Senate, and the presidency, and then they blame the other, car, sure. uh, other party for closing down the government. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we were going to talk about state <laughs> politics <laughs> in this show. Yeah. So but obviously, we have governor's candidates running. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously Democrats see an opportunity. We've got quite a few people, men and women of all mm -hmm. ages, who are who have stepped in. Um, Tony Evers, who is currently our state school superintendent, Matt Flynn, Bob Harlow, uh, Melo Michu, um, Kelda Royce, a young woman, Paul Soglin, mayor of Madison, Mike McCabe, sort of an outsider guy, calls himself leader of the Blue Blue G Nation. That's mm -hmm. it. And and Kathleen Weinhout. And Dana Walks, Andy Gronick, been to Sheboygan several times. Of these names, any of them interest you? Anybody you want to like start horse racing now, or should we stay away from horse racing? Who who interests you? Well, I, I, I being a partisan to some extent, <laughs> uh, I think that someone who's going to uh, be able to win is mm -hmm. is the way that ought to, Democrats ought to look at it, and I think uh, assessing it honestly and trying to put your support behind that person. I'm not trying to cut out people who have interest in public office, but uh, Governor Walker already has $10 million in the bank. Well, and, and that's probably before the checks from the Koch so brothers So money is come going on. to make it. So he's money. going to uh, have enough money to make a uh, silk purse out of any sow's ears that he's done over the last uh, right. number of years. And so you need somebody who's got uh, name recognition, who's got uh, public uh, 
affiliations, I guess, and, and <coughs> identification. And uh, so there are some there that are better than others. Better known names. There are some people who are, God bless them, would like to run for public office, but maybe they shouldn't have started on the, on the gubernatorial level. They should have started okay. with the legislature okay. or even county That's board level and got their feet wet and their name known and, and worked their way up the ladder. So, but I attended the forum that Sheboygan right. County had Couple and there were ago. 10 candidates there. And uh, there are a number there that uh, didn't belong on that stage because they just didn't, were not steeped in what they needed to know or handle themselves in order to take on uh, Governor Walker. And so that, that's my big fear is that I think we're up to 13 candidates now. And you don't have a decision by the voters until August. Mm -hmm. And so you know with one candidate in the Republican column, Governor Walker, with $10 million at least, that those news ads are going to paint him as the next saint. Mm -hmm. And um, he's going to be so far ahead by August if all these other candidates are dividing up the pie that I think uh, he's puts himself, even though he may have some... Uh, diminished popularity, he's going to be something that's uh, very going to be tough to beat. But there is, there is, for instance, the uh, Tony Everts who would run statewide. They're the mm -hmm. candidate that uh, he has name recognition. Yeah, has name sure. recognition, right. uh, but uh, not as a partisan, but as a nonpartisan uh, person. And then you have uh, Bob Harlow. Who, Ran for Congress in California and now is running for governor he's, in Wisconsin. He might be the youngest. Yeah, 25. 25 years old. So right. he's got. Uh, uh, I guess it didn't work in California. No gold <laughs> out there. He'd come to Wisconsin. I, I personally am glad to see at least two women who have said they're going to run. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's a good thing. I, I hope everything that's happening as far as uh, the women's march and so on really engenders reaction and participation, and uh, because even. I, I don't think that Donald Trump ought to be president, but there were an inordinate number of people who uh, were of the Republican affiliation, uh, women in the suburbs, who eventually did vote for him. Yes, yes And that man is, to me, not Occasionally. worthy of the office. And so when we get women involved in politics, I hope uh, we get some people who are running there who are articulating solid issues and turn out voting in the right direction. And if they vote on women's issues, that's fine, because that's surely not what uh, Donald Trump ever wrote. But they ran don't on. just vote on women's issues. They vote no, on economics. No. They vote but on I, education, I think that there, there is There is a valid point to be made about you know pay levels uh, and, and all mm -hmm. the other things, and sexual abuse and everything. Yeah. That has occurred because I think women have been too silent too right. long because of being repressed right. and all kinds of other factors. But to be articulate in the political sense on those issues is a good thing. Very good. And we're recording this the, the day after my organization, Forward Sheboygan, held a women's march in downtown Sheboygan. 250 people came. It was awesome. In January, right? In January weather. <laughs> well, it was warm, it was but nice. it was okay. Um, but what we made a point of doing was getting speakers, young women speakers mm -hmm. of color, so we had an African-American woman from Lakeland University talking about racism. We had three Hispanic high school students who talked about deportations and the DACA bill, which is part of the reason for the governor, government's shutdown mm -hmm. right now. And they were so articulate and so genuine and heartfelt. All of us there watching these women were, were moved. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, yes, Nanette, you can be cynical, but when you watch these young people speak, you can't help but feel hope. Mm -hmm. They have this this idealism that yeah. is such a wonderful thing to see, yeah. and let's let's keep that alive. Well, I hope that the activities that they're pursuing now, <clears throat> political activities, makes them pragmatic. Well, uh, I, okay. I was I was a Bernie supporter, um, and I saw a number of people at the rally at South High School. I talked to them, younger people, who said, "Well, if Bernie doesn't make it, I'm not going to vote." And obviously, and they didn't. They didn't. Right. And I think that's, that's idealism uh, gone absurd. Okay. And it, it, it paid off in the sense that 77,000 votes in three states gave Donald Trump the Electoral College, and that's all they needed. And mm -hmm. I, can be, it, it, I think it, you can be pretty assured that there were 77,000 Bernie supporters in those three states yeah. who probably didn't show up. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, that idealism that uh, we've had in the past that's also never been, uh, I think, channeled in the right direction. Perhaps. Yeah. Well, that's I, I where do want, we do want, can step in. In the, in the few minutes we have left, I do want to make sure that we 
<laughs> we cover the topics we, we had keep in hand. jumping no, away. No, no, that's okay. <laughs> well, elections are important. But yes, I went to uh, um, Dan Cole, who was running for Congress, Congress against Glenn Grothman. Again, and he was here at our march yesterday. I want to put in a plug. He did yeah. take the time to come along with Matthew Flynn, mm -hmm. one of the gubernatorial. And candidates. he's related to the former uh, U.S. senator. He's a yes, nephew. His uncle, a nephew, right? Mm -hmm. um, was, was her cole? And Cal and I were at a function where he was at and uh, gave a few words and uh, extremely uh, interesting background. Has uh, served on nonprofits. Uh, uh, nonprofits. Uh, uh, been on, on the, the bucks, uh, the bucks and, and the brewers uh, thing, has uh, been married 25 years, mm -hmm. and he's articulate. Mm -hmm. very um, good. He people, comes across as very sincere. I marched with him in Port Washington for their fish day parade, and I, I always watch how people interact with children, mm -hmm. and um, I, because the, they're not voting, right? You don't yeah, have to be yeah, nice to yeah, them, yeah, yeah. but he was. And of course, he, was, he knew their parents were watching, <laughs> But it was very—it was a wonderful thing to see. I, mm -hmm. I think he's a genuine, sincere. Yeah, I smart think he's man. a very quality candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a difficult district because, of course, uh, not only as you, your one of your previous programs was on reapportionment, not only were the state districts drawn by the state legislature in a partisan way, congressional mm -hmm. districts were as well, and there have been a number of court cases around the country of how um, people of color have been excluded and so right. on in mm -hmm. their congressional races, and there's some really truly gerrymandered districts all over this country. And, and a number of ours. Uh, yes. And so this district and Representative Sensenbrenner's district have a lot of uh, conservative voters packed into them. Right. Well, and, and one of the things is that uh, uh, Grossman is considered by a number of, of groups as being one of the most conservative, uh, I don't know if I'd want to call them right wing, but different uh, uh, conservative uh, than a strange kind of conservative, and so <laughs> he makes a lot of women angry. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's his appeal and, with and so, others. I don't so know. you know, maybe the right candidate in, in a in a, um, a major turnover uh, might do it, especially the quality of uh, coal. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, a couple of comments before we finish about an election that took place with Patty. Schachner, Schachner, in the tenth district. That was a Democrat woman who ran, who won. Nobody mm -hmm. expected her to win. She no. was a healthcare, a nurse or a healthcare professional. A medical examiner. How did she I win? Yeah. Well, she's a medical examiner, okay. and I think uh, some some analysis I had read is that a lot of outside money came in on the uh, conservative side, and it really was over the top. I mean, they they maligned her character to oh. such an extent. That people just had it up to their really their, their so eyeballs negative and said, ads this isn't, didn't work. Well, they knew her, and, yeah. and, and she they was knew popular. she was a real this nice. Is, and, yes, and, and this is not true. Right. And I, I think there was a I backlash okay. to the absurdity well, and the intensity of the negative. And ads. if we go any longer, it'll be <laughs> we'll better get a we'll whole get a call us off. <laughs> we, okay. we must end, and and I want to thank you for coming. And uh, please consider the elections that are coming up and some of the candidates we started talking about. We'll do more of that until next week. This has been Legislative Update. Thank you.